So guys, have you ever had like a, a check in your spirit where, you know, something just ain't right. Something isn't right. You can't put your finger on it, but something ain't right. You know, it's a biblical thing. God gave us all spiritual gifts at birth. And, you know, some Christians, they don't, they don't believe in that. And I don't know why, because I want a spiritual gift. I want a gift from God when I'm born. Like he creates life and he gives us all a purpose and we need to be able to operate in that purpose. And we all have special giftings, you know, you think of, you know, gift of prophecy, gift of healing. God gives us spiritual gifts and we have those at birth. He wants us to not be boring. Some churches make Christianity really boring. I mean, <laughs> you can't dance, you can't sing, you got no instruments. I mean, David danced and they had instruments. So we have music and it's not a bad thing. We have spiritual gifts, that's not a bad thing. Now, some people make a circus out of the spiritual gifting and it is not like that. When we start to utilize our spiritual gifting to elevate ourselves, then we're born in the wrong way. But you know, the Bible isn't boring. It's one of the most scandalous books out there. And the shade that's thrown. Like for instance, when you read about the genealogy of Jesus in the first chapter of Matthew, Uriah's wife. Y'all remember what David did? That was Uriah's wife, you know? Set that all up in the genealogies. They will not let you forget that, you know, David offed Uriah to have his wife. The shade is thrown and I'm here for it. I am here for it. And somebody mentioned this story of Saul going to a witch in Endor and having a seance to call up Samuel. I had never read that in the Bible and I was like, wait a minute, I, I need to know. So I go and I read it and sure enough, Saul had um, outlawed witchcraft, okay? Could have no witches. So he goes out, disguises himself, and goes to this witch so she can call up Samuel. Had a seance. Samuel comes up, why have you disturbed me? <laughs> like, literally, it's like, why are you calling me up? I'm, de I'm asleep, okay? Leave me alone. And so Saul is like, hey, I need help with the Philistines. What am I supposed to do? And uh, Samuel's like, what they got to do with me? And he's like, I need some help. And Samuel's like, y'all all gonna die. And this is what happened. So, I mean, that's in just what it is. And so it was kind of interesting. And then I was talking about the time when Jesus does his first miracle and uh, turning water into wine. Now, some people will argue that it's not wine. Well, that's what the Bible say, wine. So Mary's like, oh no, Jesus, they're running out of wine. Jesus was like, what that got to do with me? And she's like, well, I need you to, this is a paraphrase. Well, I need you to, to help out, you know, turn, do the thing, you know? And Jesus was like, woman, it is not my time. Woman, is that what she said? However, he's like, it's not my time yet. Mary didn't say nothing else to Jesus. She turns to the servants and says, do what he said to do and left. I was like, oh, mama was like, I know you're the son of God, but I'm your mama. You're going to do what I say. And she didn't give him an option. <laughs> She's like, do what he said to do. And then left. And so Jesus was like, well, can you give me some water? <laughs> and turn the water into wine. So we um, get a kick out of some of the stuff. And some of the stuff is really, really uncomfortable. Like, I mean, I don't profess to know everything about the Bible. And you know what? Some of the things... With God, I don't understand. Like when the guy, when the Ark of the Covenant was falling and the guy tried to help and he died because he touched it. And God was like, I told you not to touch it. I was like, Lord, why you got to be like that with him? I don't know. You know, some stuff that I don't understand, but it's not for me to understand every little bit to be able to have faith that God sent his son and for our salvation, Jesus died on the cross for us. And you know, some people, like the witnesses, will argue to say it's not a cross, but he died for our salvation. So that's what my belief is. However, I struggle. One of the things that I struggle with is American Christianity. Is it American Christianity? Maybe. Or just politically charged Christianity. And here's why. In 1807, now I've known this for a while, 1807, they created a slave Bible. 
yeah, a slave Bible just specifically to give to slaves. Now, they took out the passages that talked about freedom, liberation, oppression, and they left everything in there about obedience. So, for instance, the book of Exodus, you know, where Moses leads the Israelites out of Egypt, away from slavery, took that out. Just straight took it out. It's like, y'all don't need to know about this because they did not want them to have knowledge, which, you know, God says, my people are destroyed by a lack of knowledge because ignorance, people can tell you anything, right? So they created this Bible and they took out the passages. Exodus was left out. Some of the passages in, in Psalms where, you know, David is praying and he's talking about delivering me from my enemies. And it talks about um, being delivered from oppression and liberation and injustice. And they were like, nope, they don't need to know about this. Don't be praying about God getting rid of your enemies because the masters, I don't think they were best friends. So in Psalm 146, 7, it talks about God giving justice to the oppressed and food to the poor. None of those passages were available in their Bible for them to read because they didn't want them to have any idea about oppression and poor. Keeping people ignorant is a way to have power over them. So in Isaiah, some of the prophetic passages were left out because it was speaking about the justice for the people who were oppressed and God giving freedom to the captives. Like for, I think it was Isaiah 61 verse one. And that was removed because they don't want people being held captive wanting to be free. You know, they didn't even want you to know it was an option, you know, to pray for that sort of thing. So in the book of Jeremiah passages were left out as well because it talks about the same thing, freedom from oppression and liberation. I mean, you. Think about it. Why would they leave these passages out? They knew they were doing something wrong. So, I mean, hello. It's beyond me to understand how you got the nerve to do that. Like, do you not understand God is looking at you? I don't know. So, in the book of Galatians, they left out passages as well because, you know, it says no Jew, no Gentile because it's speaking about equality in the body of Christ. Well, you can't have equality if you want slaves, you know, they can't be equal to you. So they cut that out, just straight took it out. No Jew, no Gentile. Hmm. Okay. So in the book of Revelation, some of the passages were taken out because um, it was talking about liberation, overthrowing oppressive systems and hmm, oppression. They didn't want them to know. Revelation 22 verses 18 through 19, where it talks about don't add or subtract from these scrolls or you will be punished. Apparently they didn't care because they took scriptures out to keep people purposely ignorant of the freedom that they were entitled to through the word of God. God is not instructing us to keep one another in oppressive systems. That, that's our free will of doing. We people are creating that those systems. God is not instructing people to be cruel to one another. I mean, he gave his one and only son for our salvation. You know, it's, it's a cruel, cruel world and we can make it better if we actually did what Jesus taught. You know, he taught love. Um, and growing up Jehovah's Witness, I, well, I knew two things. I wasn't gonna be a Jehovah's Witness and I wasn't gonna live in the state of Texas. And I grew up in Texas and I left <laughs> and I'm not a Jehovah's Witness. Um, and then when I went to college and I was searching for a church and accidentally joined the cult and that didn't last long, got kicked out, dismissed um, because I'm not one to, uh, I'm not for the tomfoolery, you know, some of this stuff was, I just couldn't do. God gives us these spiritual giftings to be able to discern and something was off. Um, there was one time we're in Oklahoma and this is previously married. He wanted to go to this conference where this prophet came into town and he was having a conference at this hotel and he was telling everybody to bring things, just bring random things, you know, stick about a container of milk and a loaf of bread. And he was all excited about it. I wasn't feeling it, right? But he kind of chalked it up to, oh, you were Joe Witness, you're not used to the Holy Spirit. Okay, so 
I went and I had my daughters. They were infants. They were twins. They were infants at that time. And he told me, oh, you just need to have them in the Word. My babies were in church at least two times a week. And so I was like, okay. And in my eyes, babies are closer to God than we are. But, you know, they needed to be in the Word. So that man prophesied over everybody except for me. Now, I wasn't rude. I was listening and wasn't really feeling what he was delivering. But other people were. And I guess, I don't know if they felt his word. But he prophesied over everybody except for me. And I was like, okay, well, I ain't got no word. Which is fine, you know. I am... Um, like to research and know the word for myself so if the pastor's standing up and he's telling a story about the word of god in the, you know the scriptures and his interpretation i will look things up i'm not going to just go off of what a man says because ultimately we are all human and we can all fall short right you see pastors mega churches and all that sort of stuff they get too caught up in their power and being who they are this is a side comment uh, I've been into watching YouTube videos about cult members and celebrities who get caught up in what their stories were. And a lot of these people desire power. They desire to be admired and people to follow them and they want money. Money is huge to these people and admiration and power. They was the pastor had drivers and you know he had a VIP section and if you weren't in what they called God God, they didn't let you in. You know, the celebrities were coming and they would drive up in the back and have, they had valet parking and all this sort of stuff. And, you know, it was the who's who and pastor fell from grace, ended up having an affair. And so we can't elevate other humans above everybody because we are all saved by grace and we all fall short. So when we start to idolize pastors and stuff, God will show you, mm, nope, he is the only one and true God that you need to be worshiping. Don't people worship. Stay away from that. Again, in the word, it says to test the spirits. We are supposed to question and learn and look things up in the scripture. You know, the Berean church is known for studying. Paul sent a letter, and they were looking it up. They were like, oh, let, let us research what this man is saying. Is it correct? This is what we need to be doing and not relying on a person to read the Bible for us. We need to get in that word ourselves, or we will be destroyed by a lack of knowledge. And then God ain't going to pay attention to us because our willingness to be ignorant, because it takes us too long, or we can't understand. We can actually understand if we take the time out too, because we have a lot of resources to explain things to us. Some of the uh, denominations don't believe that women should teach and preach and lead in the church, right? And that comes from a interpretation of scripture, okay? So I'll show you this. So I'm going to read the scripture to you. It's in 1 Timothy 2, 11 and 12, right? A woman should learn in the quietness and full submission I do not permit a woman to teach or assume authority over a man. She must be quiet. Okay, so the book of Timothy was written in Greek. And the Greek word they used was not for complete silence. It, I'm not going to butcher the word because I don't speak Greek, but I'll put it here. Um, it was meant for a calm, peaceful, tranquil environment. It wasn't meant to oppress and shut women down but it was translated to sound that way in the english bible just kind of like how we have jesus because there was no j in the hebrew language the word translated into jesus over time you know we translate things from greek to latin to english and the, the translations get confused so it's not complete silence it's tranquil peaceful you know, be quiet and let me learn. Don't be disturbing me, right? So the other word for submission, you know, it means obedience. It means orderly, right? Um, and I'll put that word here. I, I don't speak Greek, so I'm not going to butcher the word. Um, submission in an orderly way, obedience, where, okay, you think of it as a teacher in a classroom, right? 
We need order, we need structure. It's not to oppress and say, you can't say anything, be quiet. It's, hey, I'm speaking, it's your turn to listen and me to talk and then you'll have a time to talk and I will listen. So he was basically trying to bring order to the church where he was saying, hey, listen, be calm, learn, listen, don't be chaotic. Don't be chaotic was basically the message behind that. But we translated it into women should not teach. No, there were a lot of leaders, women in the Bible. And God gave us all spiritual giftings. He, he gave us all spiritual giftings. There's so many women who, well, I mean, you think about it. Who's your first teacher? It's your mama. Yes, your dad teaches you things as well. But nobody says, oh, dad, you have to teach everything because mom is not allowed to teach. You know, there are a lot of women who bring wisdom and read the word, you know, and they're not forbidden to teach the word of God. God gave us all spiritual giftings that we shall use to advance the kingdom. And he's not going to say, woman, sit down, because he gave us the power to give life. So people will use that scripture to, you know, reinforce that sort of thinking. And it's all wrong because the interpretation. So we are not supposed to be destroyed by a lack of knowledge. Unfortunately, some people feel intimidated by reading the Bible. Just pick it up and read it. Start with Genesis 1-1. It's a story. It's a historical book about people who lived way back when, what they did. They did a lot of messing up. We all do. But it's an encouraging thing because God uses everyone to teach us and spread the word of God. And we're supposed to be delivering the good news. Jesus came for us because he loved us and he wanted to teach us to love one another. And we're supposed to do that, love God and love people. But it's hard for us because, you know, one of the things I tell my kids, love is not subjecting yourself to abuse. No, that's not love. Sometimes love says no. Sometimes love says, I'm gonna put some distance between us and pray for you while you be over there and I'll be over here. Sometimes love is putting up protection for you against someone who's able to harm you, who's using their free will to hurt you. Loving yourself is not a bad thing. We're supposed to love ourselves so we can love others. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is going away. I think I'm talking way too much. But look in the word for yourself and don't be carried away with all the nonsense that's out there. Um, I know as far as like, you know, we're talking about the slave Bible where they didn't have anything else. Well, nowadays we do. We have resources. We got 66 books in our Bible and they were put there for a reason. We can research why. The Ethiopian Bible has a lot more books included in it. So we can research and ask why. God is not afraid of our questions. So I'm going to encourage you to look at the resources that are available to you and don't be afraid to Look at other books that are not in the Bible. You may not think that they're inspired by God. Holy Spirit will lead you. And, you know, as long as you're guided by the Holy Spirit, you're able to research. Anyway, take some time out to read the word for yourself and research some of these historical facts about the Bible. And maybe you'll find out something new. But yeah, there's a lot of shade in the Bible too. Okay. All right. Love you guys. I hope that you are experiencing God's blessings and I'll see you later. Bye.